Welcome to another video interview brought to you by AIQC's online community, Connected. I'm Emily Frankenberg, and I'm the assistant editor of CEP, AIQC's flagship publication. With me today is Charles McCon McConnell. He's the assistant secretary for the U.S. Department of Energy's Office of Fossil Energy. He's the lead office for coal, natural gas, and oil research and development. Today, he's going to be speaking at the 2012 annual meeting plenary with a presentation titled CO2 Capture, Utilization, and Storage in Natural Gas and Oil Recovery, Harnessing Scientific Development and Business Principles to Achieve Fossil Energy Sustainability. Okay, um, do you want to start by talking a little bit about your presentation? Sure, today? Emily. Uh, it's, a, it's an important time for all of us in this country and really globally in terms of the technologies that we use today for our fossil energy. Um, it's important that we have sustainable fossil energy utilization, um, whether it's coal, oil, or natural gas. And when I say sustainable, what I'm really talking about is the fact that environmentally, it's up to the standards that people in the communities in which we work and live uh, expect. Mm -hmm. And we continue to take advantage of the economics of fossil energy utilization because it's so fundamentally important and uh, it's what will be a big part of the future in the world. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about the Office of Fossil Energy's role in developing and implementing carbon capture and utilization and storage methods? Sure can, Emily. You know, <laughs> it's one of our, our biggest efforts in our department is that when we talk about utilization of uh, and carbon capture, it's really a, a set of activities that's come together uh, under the umbrella of technology, which was originally aimed toward capturing carbon dioxide and sequestering it or storing it rather than admitting it, emitting it to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. This was really driven by uh, the sustainability concerns around CO2 and climate change, et cetera, to the atmosphere. But as we've progressed and seen the opportunities that we have for not just geological storage, but geological advantages that we have in this country with oil that can be produced from CO2 with secondary and tertiary recovery technologies, we're excited about the fact that carbon capture utilization and storage can really provide the, the best of both. Mm -hmm. We're going to get an environmental improvement because we'll be removing the CO2 from the atmosphere, but we'll also get the economic benefit, the balance of trade improvement, really the whole energy security story that comes by producing more domestic oil than we ever have before and we're going to be doing it in an environmentally sustainable manner. So our technologies are all driven by the ability to do this cost-effectively with a market driver in place. Okay. So what are the major barriers preventing a wider deployment of these carbon capture technologies? It's, it's a big part of the research that we're doing along with the demonstration projects that we currently have in our portfolio. The portfolio today is driven by existing technologies in places where pipelines and geology for existing domestic oil production uh, is in place. And that's a real advantage that we can take uh, from existing infrastructure. But longer term, for the market to really develop, the science, the development, the R&D that comes along with carbon dioxide capture technologies to lower the cost, to improve the overall capabilities of the technology to deliver sustainably, uh, reliably, uh, at scale, such that we can take advantage of the carbon dioxide that's being emitted from power plants, from chemical facilities, uh, a host of opportunities across the country, not just in places where the geology today is being utilized for oil, but in future places, such as the Ohio River Valley, right here where we'll be speaking at the uh, AICHE here in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So how do these strategies of enhanced CO2 capture and sustainable natural gas and oil recovery fit into the bigger sustainability strategies of the Department of Energy? Well, it's all about all of the above. Mm -hmm. And the all of the above strategy is very straightforward. Uh, 
And that's true not just in the United States, but that's true globally, Emily. It's important that people understand that around the world, many people have never had the lights on and the air conditioning and the electrical capabilities that we've taken for granted for many, many years in this country. And much of that is going to be driven by the continued expansive use of coal, oil, and natural gas. We believe it's important from a leadership standpoint to have the sustainable technologies that it be clean, environmentally friendly, but also at the same time a compelling choice to continue to use fossil because of the economics. Mm -hmm. The barriers that we face, that's part of what our R&D is all about. We need to lower the cost of carbon dioxide capture technologies. Absolutely the elephant in the room in terms of driving that down. That's why it was so important for us to be a part of this AICHE uh, discussion because the finest minds in the world are assembled here and when you, when you create a prize like lowering the cost of CO2, you make it crisp and clear and have the marketplace drive for it, that's when science actually solves problems. It's not going to be done politically. It'll be done by scientific and engineering minds that are assembled at a, at a venue like this. Okay. All right. Well, that's great. Thank you very much. Well, it's my pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody here, and it's great to be back in Pittsburgh.